Hello and welcome to this MicroApps talk, which is called an XKU band phased array prototyping system. My name is Eamon Nash. I'm an applications engineering manager at Analog Devices. I focus primarily on RF amplifiers and beamforming ICs. So the agenda of today's talk is I'm going to start by giving a little if, bit of an overview of radar and XKU band radar. Then I will talk about the ADAR1000, which is an XKU beamforming IC, along with the ADTR1107, which is a TR module that was designed to couple closely with the ADAR1000. We talk about some of the challenges associated with prototyping uh, phased array systems. We talk about an XKU band phased array development kit that Analog Devices has designed. I'll show you some measurement results from that system, and then we'll finish up with some summary and conclusions. So let's talk a little bit about the basics of radar. So the basic idea of pulsed radar is that you transmit a short uh, duration uh, RF pulse uh, aimed at a target. Uh, in this case, it's a raindrop or a cloud. And when that uh, short pulse of RF energy hits the target, it reflects back and some of the energy arrives back at the antenna, which has been switched to receive mode in the meantime. And based on the time of flight and the amplitude and the phase of the signal that is received, you can make assessments about the location of the, of the target, the size of the target, and also the velocity and the acceleration of the, of the target. Now, as you probably know, uh, radar systems are going through an evolution where they're changing from mechanically steered systems, which are shown in the picture here, to electronically steered systems. And the basics of an electronically steered uh, phased array system is that instead of having one antenna, you have an array of multiple antennas which are generally spaced at, a, at uh, a lattice spacing of lambda over two for the operating frequency. And what you do is that you uh, transmit the same signal into each element. However, you adjust the amplitude and the phase of that signal relative to the other elements. And in doing that, you can electronically steer the beam in a particular direction. By increasing the number of elements in the array, you can also make the beam uh, very, very sharp and narrow. And the kind of results that you get from a, an electronically steered system are similar to the rendering uh, below on the right, which is a, uh, an image of a 3D image of a uh, weather system. So if you're going to do uh, phased array or analog beam steering, you're going to use a device that looks very much like this device on the right here, ADAR1000. Um, this is a quad uh, beamformer IC. It is designed for TDD applications. So the way it would operate is that the pulse I was talking about earlier would be fed in here. It would be split in four. These switches would be configured for transmit mode and the four signals would come out to these uh, four outputs and the relative amplitude and phases of those would be adjusted. Then uh, during the time of flight, the system would switch to receive mode using these TR switches, and the uh, received signals would come in through these four uh, vector modulators, and they would be recombined to give you your RF output, output here. This is a picture of the evaluation board for the ADAR1000. And because you have uh, so many RF channels on it, uh, there's lots and lots of uh, connectors on there. So the other part of the equation uh, at RF is the TR module or amplification. So um, connected to the receive side of the beamformer, you're going to have an LNA. And connected to the transmit side, you're going to have a PA. And this PA and LNA are housed in, um, in a module along with a TR, TR switch. Uh, this particular device here, ADTR1107, is a quarter watt uh, TR module that is designed specifically to couple closely with the ADAR1000 um, beamformer. 
And you can see that in addition to having a, a glueless interface on the RF, there are also lots and lots of other interconnects between the two. There is a TR switch control signal. There is a uh, signal that feeds back from this directional coupler back to an RF detector on the beamformer. And there are also bias control lines which can be used to turn on and off the PA and the LNA and also to adjust their, their bias. So you can imagine that if you were wanted to try and prototype a phased array system by connecting together evaluation boards, it's really going to become uh, complicated and uh, pretty much impossible uh, as you build up any reasonable number of elements. And just to give you an example of this, this is a uh, demonstrator that we built a couple of years ago and where we took two ADAR 1000 eval boards and connected the four transmit outputs to a small eight by one uh, array element. And we steered uh, the transmit beam uh, to these uh, this array of um, detect RF detectors with LED LED displays. And um, even with this rudimentary demonstrator, which was transmit only, which didn't have a TR module and didn't have any biasing or detector cabling between the two, um, the cabling is already getting uh, complicated. So you can imagine if you want to add TR modules to this, uh, to this arrangement, you would be using lots and lots of cables and it will quickly become not feasible. So the solution really to this is uh, in providing a development system is you need to put down uh, a number of uh, beamformers and TR modules on one board. And that's what we've done in this uh, development system, which we're calling Stingray. So we've taken eight ADAR 1000s along with 32 ADTR 1107s and put them on a single board along with power management, uh, two PMOD connectors for programming and also a standalone RF power detector which can be used for calibration. This is what the component side of the board looks like. So you can see the eight ADAR1000 uh, quad beamformers each one surrounded by four ADTR 1107s. And these are arranged in a 15 uh, millimeter lattice. Uh, 15 millimeters is lambda over two at 10 gigahertz. And then on the bottom side of the board, we have um, the power management section, the two PMOD connectors. Uh, we also included an ADI uh, STP proprietary uh, connector. Uh, along with a, a power connector. And just to get back to the RF, one thing I forgot to mention was that for flexibility and ease of uh, configurability, instead of putting an eight to one splitter on the board, we decided to give each uh, ADAR1000 its own RF feed, which is via SMPM connectors. And this allows you to do either hybrid beamforming or analog beamforming. So this is what the board looks like mounted on the stand, which we also provide uh, for ease of use. The board is also designed to take a heat sink and that heat sink uh, is shown here in this, in this rendering. And because we have the eight SMPM connectors, we also have uh, required cutouts to access those, uh, those snap-on connectors. The, uh, the heat sinking that's provided by this heat sink, we believe is, is adequate uh, based on a power budget that we've done, a thermal budget, I should say. But we also made provision for adding uh, active cooling via a fan. This is what the, uh, what I'll call the antenna side of the board uh, looks like. Uh, we decided early on not to hardwire antennas on here. Again, it's a question of flexibility. Um, some folks want to do uh, over-the-air testing, some folks want to do electrical testing, and, and also if you put antennas on there, you're really locked into the bandwidth uh, or the frequency range of the available antenna. We did, however, design um, a 4x4 four four, uh, snap-on antenna, which is optimized for operation at 10 gigahertz, also with the 
15 millimeter lattice spacing and you can see two of those antennas snapped on here to give you an 8x4 array. You might be wondering uh, why we have these goalpost like uh, looking uh, extensions on the stand. The idea of that is so that you can take a second board, um, turn it 180 degrees and mount it upside down and now you can mount another um, 32 elements and achieve a 64 element 8x8 array. That's the limitation in the vertical, uh, that's the, the most elements you can have. In the horizontal axis you can however uh, implement uh, a larger array count. The stand is designed to accept so that you can screw on additional uh, boards to the left and the right. So you can make it the, on the horizontal axis you can make the array as big as you want. So that would be uh, an example of, of over-the-air testing, but as I said, it really with that antenna uh, board, it only works at 10 gigahertz. If you wanted to do over-the-air testing at a different frequency uh, with your own uh, antenna, then you could cable out to that uh, antenna board, which would have a different lattice spacing, similar to what's shown here. Or you could do um, electrical testing, where you would connect um, this side of the uh, this side of the board to a network analyzer, and also this side would connect to the other port of the network analyzer. And that's what this might look like. So you can see here we have an a network analyzer either connected to the antenna for over-the-air testing, or connected directly to one of the one of the connectors. And then on the um, on the input side, we would have a one to eight splitter. This would be really if you were trying to develop an analog, an all analog beam forming, beam forming system. And then the programming of the channels would come through the PMOD connectors, which would be connected to PMOD connectors on an FPGA, such as the VCU-118. And these are some results uh, that we've gotten uh, already from this system. What we did in this example was we set all of the L we measured the gain of uh, the LNA path with all of the uh, LNA gains set to the same value, and this is really useful because it gives you a sense for what the part-to-part -part variation in gain is of the combined uh, LNA in the TR module along with the vector modulator uh, in the receive path in the in the beamformer. Uh, so this is really useful for uh, assessing um, how much correction you need to complete to perfectly anal uh, uh, amplitude align all of the channels. And we did the same thing with the, um, with the phase of the LNAs. So again, we uh, set all of the vector modulators to the same settings and measured the, gain, the phase through the LNA and the receive vector modulator. And you can see here that we're getting uh, worst case, we're seeing in this case, around plus minus 15 uh, degrees of phase variation from channel to channel. Um, doing timing measurements is another place where this board uh, comes into its own. Uh, we did try initially to connect the beamformer to the, um, to the TR module. Uh, tried to connect the control lines, the TR, TR switch lines, and so forth. And we found we didn't get really particularly good results because we had to fly wires uh, through the air. Uh, so we got a lot of ringing and delay. So you really have to have the two devices down on the same board to get uh, a good response. And these are the response times from the TR um, signal flipping to the uh, output to the detected output. This is RX to TX transmit switching, and this is TX to RX switching. And this indicates the envelope of the detected uh, RF output. And these response times are in line with what we would have expected for the uh, cascaded delay time of the two devices. So in addition to developing this um, RF front end, we also are um, planning and working to develop a complete end-to-end -end system 
for XKU band uh, phase array development. So this would include an up-down converter board and also a an um, an A to D and D to A board. And the, the, the board that we are focusing on is the 9081, which is also called the MF, MXFE, which is a multi-channel uh, RF sampling uh, A to D and, and D to A. And again, this would connect to a Xilinx um, ZCU102, which would in turn connect to um, a MATLAB, MATLAB program. Um, it's worth checking out uh, a MicroApps talk by one of my colleagues, Chaz Frick. It's called uh, 16TX16RX S-Band Phased Array Radar Prototyping Platform. So that talk is really focusing on this end of the signal chain, where you take uh, multiple uh, MXFE 9081 uh, devices, uh, connect them to an FPGA, and implement an S-Band uh, direct sampled uh, radar system. And that would be um, an all digital uh, beamforming system. So to summarize, what we have here really is a scalable RF front end, which we hope will be useful to our customers uh, and help them to uh, eliminate uh, some of their uh, prototyping uh, so that we can give them um, a hardware uh, solution that they can start working on immediately. I would say it's suitable for analog and hybrid beamforming. It's scalable in the vertical uh, to eight elements and in the horizontal to 8n elements, really as many as you want. Uh, there is a standalone detector on there, which can be used for channel calibration, and it would be programmed through the PMOD. Now, we will provide a uh, basic software for verifying the operation of the, of the channels, uh, but really the, we envisage that all of the programming and the array algorithms and all that, that would be uh, programmed by the end user. We do have a Keysight System View uh, model and workspace available for the ADAR1000 and ADTR1107, and that's available on request from Analog Devices. And you should contact Analog Devices for pricing and availability. The part number for this system is ADAR1000 EVAL1Z. So that's it. I like to finish these micro apps talks with a call out to come and visit our booth. Unfortunately, we don't have a physical booth this year. We are present at the virtual IMS, uh, but you can reach us anytime at analog.com. Uh, for technical support, you can go to Engineer Zone or just contact, uh, contact your local sales, sales team. So I'd like to thank you for um, attending this MicroApps talk, and I look forward to hearing from you. Mm -hmm.